Hillary Clinton was at an event for Harry Reid since he's leaving the Senate, and uh, she gave a speech where she said something very concerning. Let me just mention briefly one thread in particular that should concern all Americans, Democrats, Republicans, and independents alike, especially those who serve in our Congress. The epidemic of malicious fake news and false propaganda that flooded social media over the past year. It's now clear that so-called fake news can have real-world consequences. This isn't about politics or partisanship. Lives are at risk. Lives of ordinary people just trying to go about their days to do their jobs, contribute to their communities. It's a danger that must be addressed, and addressed quickly. Bipartisan legislation is making its way through Congress to boost the government's response to foreign propaganda, and Silicon Valley is starting to grapple with the challenge and threat of fake news. It's imperative that leaders in both the private sector and the public sector step up to protect our democracy and innocent lives. Okay, so I have a lot to say about this. First of all, um, she might loosely be referring to the fact that there was this story that uh, people are calling Pizzagate. It's about how Hillary Clinton was accused of running a child uh, sex ring out of a pizza place in Washington, D.C. Okay, that is fake, um, and it's ridiculous. <laughs> so, look, is it true that there are some, you know, things out there that are just beyond preposterous, and if people believe it, it's actually, you know, it can lead to real-world consequences that are devastating. Yeah, I mean, there was another story recently about how um, Sa a Sandy Hook truther threatened, you know, the mother of uh, a child who died in Sandy Hook. Oh, no. So, yes, there are examples of horrific stories that potentially lead to bad action. Now, having said that, the answer is not government legislation. In fact, that would make the problem worse. Because what are you talking about? Oh, we're gonna, you know, there's bipartisan legislation making its way through Congress to address this. Okay, it, there are countries that do things that are similar. There was a story in the news yesterday about how China, in a certain province of China, they'll now fine you up to $72,000 for fake news. How is fake news defined? Anything that doesn't toe the line of the government. So, any dissent, anything that they don't like, anything that the authorities don't like, they go, oh, fake, fine you. Fine you or throw you in jail or something. Yeah, Hillary, that's called a fucking police state with no rights and no freedom. Certainly no freedom of speech, no freedom of the press, no freedom of expression. So, the fact that you'd say this and not understand how you're coming across as cracking down on the First Amendment is unbelievable to me. But then furthermore, really, you're gonna make this speech? Hillary fucking Clinton is gonna make this speech. If you wanna have a conversation about fake news, I think you should open the conversation with the fact that you bought into the fake news on Iraq having weapons of mass destruction, and you voted for the war, which led to hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians dead, our own soldiers dead, and the occupation of a country that didn't attack us. So, spare me. I mean, that's the real dangerous fake news. The dangerous fake news that broke the Middle East. Saddam did not have weapons of mass destruction. Saddam did not do 9-11. And then you just move the goalpost to, oh, I guess he's a bad guy. There's a lot of bad guys in the world. That doesn't mean you go in there and do a fucking over a decade long war and kill hundreds of thousands of civilians. So, you're the last person to make this criticism. And also, it's not just so people would say, well, okay, you're Kyle, you're going far back there. Yeah, but that was a fake news story that really devastated the world, and you had dick to say about it then. In fact, you never even called it fake news. It took her until 2014 to come out against the Iraq War. Republicans had flipped before she did. But then furthermore, fake news. You mean like when your surrogates went out during the primary and argued, oh, no, 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 the WikiLeaks aren't, uh, or the, during the election in general, I should say, and said, no, the WikiLeaks are, uh, fake. Now, that that's totally made up. But they said, oh, the WikiLeaks, a bunch of them are fake. Why do they do that? Because it's a... They are doing fake news to try to negate actual information that might hurt their candidate. 
So don't talk to me about fucking fake news. Fake news like, oh, Bernie bros exist and they're super sexist and that's why they're against Hillary. Right, Bernie supporters who are supporting a feminist, he's a feminist, he's described himself as a feminist, um, and somebody who's the most liberal senator in the U.S., who's fought for women's rights, who's fought for everybody's rights for decades, yeah, we're, we're sexist, that's what it is, you got us, that's fake news. That's fake news and that's a smear campaign. But in your mind, fake news to serve your purposes, totally cool. Fake news that uh, disagrees with your opinions and policy positions and... And feeling, well, you know, they're the problem. No. This is Orwell 101. Oh, fake news. It's such a real scandal that maybe we need to pass laws to go after it. And then maybe we use those laws to crack down on anything that doesn't fit our narrative. Yeah. No. Uh, David Brock, one of your top henchmen does fake news. See, Media Matters, which is the Breitbart of the left, which is ironically, he says, I want to create a Breitbart of the left. You already did it. It's called Media Matters. They've used hacky arguments all along. You know, like, uh, oh, fake news, except unless it suits my own purposes, in which case I love it and it's grandfathered in. But if it disagrees with me, you know, well, then, then it's a problem and maybe we need legislation against it. That's fundamentally against the Constitution. That's fundamentally against the First Amendment. And even though it is true, there's a lot of malicious fake shit out there. I would never pass legislation against it. You have to f just find a way to raise awareness and let people know, don't just, anything that just suits your bias, don't just, oh, that's got to be true. Be reasonable. Think it through, you know? And that's not going to work. You're not going to stop everybody from believing some bullshit, but it's better to have freedom and the downsides associated with freedom than to restrict freedom and also, by the way, create massive problems, even bigger problems, because we already know what it's like when governments restrict free speech and the free press. Look at China. Look at any totalitarian state. That's worse off. There's more uh, repression and oppression, and there's more downsides to that than having the occasional story which leads to some bad actions. Again, I get it. I'm not downplaying that, but I'm saying you have to weigh the factors and you always need to fall on the side of free speech rights and free press rights. That's not even a question. And she's out there. By the way, the first the first or second time she's making an appearance in public since losing. Actually, one other time it was at a fucking cocktail party with rich people. Go figure. Um, and she's been spotted in the woods hiking. Like a fucking Yeti. <laughs> People are like, oh, Hillary Clinton sighting. Now she's at, at this Harry Reid event where Harry Reid's going away. Weird. Bernie Sanders has been to Standing Rock and giving speeches about how he stands with Native Americans. Bernie Sanders has been out there still fighting for actual liberal policy issues. Hillary only shows up for donor parties and to berate people about how we need to crack down on a free press. I can't, I, I'm, I'm shocked. I can't figure out why she lost.